Welcome back to 10 with Ken. I'm Ken Steele. Yeah, I know, it's well into March, but I did promise to continue our year in review with a look back at the campus challenges and controversies of 2016. Across North America, we saw college and university presidents step down abruptly, often because they stepped in it, making culturally insensitive or politically incorrect remarks that came back to haunt them. From defending slave owners to workplace bullying. This week, 2016 Headaches, Part 1. Budgets and Bunnies. Take two aspirins, and let's take ten. Even devoting two episodes to the topic, we can't do justice to all the PR headaches on college and university campuses last year. Instead, we'll look at a couple of highlights and some growing themes. As every year, bad luck, bad decisions, and bad metaphors derailed presidents across North America. Right off the bat, last January, the president of Mount St. Mary's University, a small liberal arts Catholic college in Maryland, got himself into hot water over his radical solution to the problem of student retention. Encourage students to fail faster. You see, students who drop out early enough don't count in retention statistics. Clever, huh? President Simon Newman made national headlines, particularly because of his colorful metaphor to faculty, published in the student newspaper. For the normally quiet Catholic University tucked away in the mountains in Frederick County, the last few weeks have been filled with unwanted national attention. It all starts when the student-run paper at Mount St. Mary's University reported on Newman's plan to weed out struggling students. The student-run paper reported that Newman justified his plan by telling those who opposed him that, quote, this is hard for you because you think of the students as cuddly bunnies, but you can't. You have to drown the bunnies, put a Glock to their heads, end quote. Then Newman aroused outrage on campus by demoting the provost, firing a tenured faculty member for insufficient loyalty, and firing another who was the faculty advisor to that student paper. By now, you've probably guessed that Newman wasn't a career academic. In fact, he was an investment banker. A wolf of Wall Street? Thousands signed petitions. The AAUP objected, and the accreditors investigated. We are all bunnies, said untenured faculty across the country. By March 1st, President Newman had resigned, less than a year after assuming the role. Canada had its share of presidential tribulations last year, too. In February, Kevin Nagel stepped down as president of Keanu College as the school wrestled with a 20% drop in revenue and major budget cuts. Plunging oil prices had upturned the economy of Fort McMurray and of the whole country. And that was all before the wildfire, which we discussed a couple of episodes ago. In fall 2016, Nova Scotia's Cape Breton University was beset with labor tension over its faculty contract. Issues of workload and job security led to a 92% strike vote in August. To avert a strike, President David Wheeler apparently negotiated a compromise contract, but without involving the Board of Governors Negotiating Committee. The board put Wheeler on paid leave while they investigated, and dismissed him in December along with the tentative contract. Two months later, a new tentative agreement was reached. Now, if a presidency that ends within a year is short, how about one that ends before it begins? In December 2015, after a lengthy search process, Brock University announced that it would be appointing Wendy Sucker, formerly VP of Research at Ryerson University, as its new president. The announcement was given with 10 months' notice, but just three days before she was to assume the role in September, the Board of Trustees abruptly announced there had been a mutual decision to part ways. Shortly thereafter, the national media reported that Ryerson had conducted an investigation into the work environment in Sucre's department around the time of the Brock announcement. Concerns were raised by an anonymous email alleging a toxic work environment of bullying and overwork. Although senior administrators at Ryerson were aware of the complaint, including then-President Sheldon Levy, now Ontario's Deputy Minister of Advanced Education, the Brock board is on record as saying they were unaware. As we saw last year at UBC, and as we're going to see again next week, privacy concerns create an information vacuum which breeds speculation, rumor, and unrest. In the academic world, political incorrectness or cultural insensitivity are often capital offenses, 
and they've created plenty of turmoil on American college campuses over the past few years. In late 2015, at the University of Missouri, tensions were building after a series of acts of racial vandalism and an inadequate response from the administration. After a month of protests, including a hunger strike, faculty walkout, and a tent city in the quad, the students finally gained international media attention when the varsity football team announced they would not play again until the system president resigned. Within weeks, President Tim Wolf and the Chancellor both stepped down. Please, please use this resignation to heal, not to hate, and let's move forward together for a brighter tomorrow. The impact of all this campus unrest on Mizzou's reputation and undergraduate student recruitment was immediate and significant. Since the protests, MU will see the lowest new student enrollment in 10 years. Last year, MU had 6,200 new students. As of last week, only 4,700 students are signed up for the freshman class in the fall. Enrollment dropping so much, Mizzou's leaders have made the decision to close four dorms because they won't have enough students to fill them. At about the same time, Black Lives Matter protesters at Ithaca College in New York held a solidarity walkout over Parent Weekend, demanding that President Tom Roshan step down over ongoing racial justice issues. We want Tom Roshan to resign or be removed from his position. No part of me, I can be very clear on this one right now, no small part of me is thinking about resigning right now. Mm -hmm. I am completely focused on doing what I consider to be a very important job at a crucial moment in Ithaca College history. In December, 72% of students and faculty voted no confidence in Roshan. Tom Roshan! No confidence! Tom Roshan! No confidence! The issue of the culture of racial inclusion, racism, uh, bias incidents on campus is a much wider cultural issue uh, that changing the president by itself would do almost nothing for. In January 2016, he announced he would be stepping down. In 19 months. Sometimes it's just figureheads that roll over political incorrectness. At Georgetown, anger was mounting throughout 2015 over two buildings named for former presidents who arranged the sale of slaves to pay off the university's debt in the early 19th century. Protests peaked in November, and the administration announced it would temporarily change the name of the buildings to Freedom Hall and Remembrance Hall. Back in March 2016, Harvard University announced that it would be retiring the official shield of its law school because of ties to Isaac Royal, an 18th century slave owner who donated his estate to fund the first law professorship there. Likewise, at Yale University, protesters demanded a name change for Calhoun College, which commemorated a white supremacist and slave owner. After months of protests, Yale announced in April 2016 that it would not change the name, because in three centuries, Yale had never changed a building name. Yale deciding not to change the name of that residential college, and now some students there are upset. Now, Yale's president announced in a written statement Thursday the school would be keeping the name despite the concerns of many. The reasons cited include that the name is part of Yale's history and that it can be used to help learn and teach. Anger erupted, and rallies and protests continued throughout 2016. Finally, in early 2017, Yale relented, agreeing to change the name of Calhoun College to commemorate instead Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. Yale deciding after all to change the name of the much debated and controversial Calhoun College. The conclusion of a controversy. Yale soon to strip John C. Calhoun's name from one of its residential colleges. The 19th century vice president and staunch supporter of slavery was a Yale graduate. But sometimes you just cannot make everybody happy. Geraldo Rivera announced he's quitting an associate fellow position at Calhoun College over what he calls an intolerant insistence on political correctness. Rivera went on to say on Twitter, slavery was abhorrent sin. Will Yale students now petition to change name of USA Capitol? Washington was a slaveholder, as was Jefferson. And there are scores of other examples, but you get the idea. Much like the populist desire to knock Hillary Clinton down a peg or to reject the EU in Britain, on college campuses, there's a groundswell of impatience to topple white male privilege, often starting with the president. In Canada, complaints over racial microaggressions seem almost quaint by comparison. 
Back in 2013, a private group of investors in Kitchener, Ontario wanted to erect a series of 22 statues of former prime ministers in a downtown park. It's the sort of thing our neighbours to the south in the land of Mount Rushmore would take for granted. But Kitchener City Council consulted the community, and 79% opposed the idea, calling it a tacky tribute to dead rich white lawyers. Council rejected the project because it would not reflect the multiculturalism of the community. But organizers didn't give up, and in the summer of 2015 announced a new home for the project on the campus of Wilfrid Laurier University. The university's namesake, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, would of course be among the statues. Throughout the fall, multiple student groups protested the project as insensitive to First Nations and minority groups. They emphasized that former prime ministers were people who had perpetuated crimes against indigenous peoples. And I think students really didn't want to have to look at a statue of Stephen Harper. In November 2015, Senate urged the board to cancel the project, which they did in February 2016. It took three years, but the offensive project was squashed before it could happen. How Canadian of us. We've just started our annual review of the PR headaches experienced by higher ed. We still have to look at two of the biggest migraines experienced by Canadian universities last year. As you might expect, the stories had legs because they touched the deepest recesses of the human psyche. Next week's headaches are all about sex. To be sure you don't miss it, take a moment now to join more than 13,000 10 with Ken subscribers and followers on any of a dozen platforms. You'll find links to all these channels and an email subscription form on our website at 10withken.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. 10 with Ken is a production of Eduvation Inc. Copyright 2017. I'm available for conference keynotes, campus PD events, board retreats, and committee workshops in person or now virtually too. For more information, please visit www.eduvation.guru or 10withken.com.